was 10 years old, I was playing cool math games, as you do on your free time. And I noticed something in the corner of my eye while I was playing. Didn't immediately give it too much attention, but after a while, I realized the gravity of my situation, and I quickly gasped for air. I just won a new iPhone 5S. <laughs> no way, I thought to myself. So of course, I clicked the pop-up immediately and uh, input my parents' email address, regular address, phone number, you know, to get me the iPhone, of course. A few hours later, my dad comes yelling at me that I had downloaded something called malware onto the computer. But I told him, calm down, just, just wait for the iPhone, OK? <laughs> now, waiting days became weeks, weeks became months, months became years. And to this day, I still do not have an iPhone 5S, ladies and gentlemen. I believe I have been scammed. <laughs> now, the reason I illustrate this, many of you have probably had a similar experience or under, know somebody who's had a similar experience, is that our relationship with technology has been simple like that. It felt more like a Western movie, where every, every now and then there were some bandits, but you know, it was, it, you could deal with it, and you could get a pff, little Google search in there every now and then. But as technology becomes more complex, so does our relationship with technology. When I talk about technology becoming more complex, I'm mostly referring to the advent of AI technology in today's day and age. How many of you have a social media account? Please raise your hands. I should be seeing everybody because there's no way you don't have a social media account in this day and age. Everybody has a social media account, and the main interaction with that social media account is artificial intelligence or a system that is designed to mimic human intelligence and learn through data. Now, it gets a bad rap because of literally every sci-fi movie. However, at the end of the day, it's such a cool concept to think about. A system that can manipulate large amounts of data and learn from it, that's kind of incredible if you think about it. We could be solving problems like transportation, energy, environment. We could count how many people in this room have red shirts. That probably wouldn't be that useful, but at the very least, we could do it. All that being said, instead of being used to solve those grand problems, we are having it recommend us motivational Shaq clips on TikTok. If I see him rip the paycheck in half one more time, I'm going to lose it. <laughs> now, with this, obviously, I'm referring to the commercialization of artificial intelligence technology in terms of marketing. Imagine, if you will, a man that is in your house every day staring at you like that, watching your every move, breath, everything you eat, while you sleep. It's pretty unnerving, right? And then all of a sudden, every like 10 minutes or so, he tries to sell you like a football or something. <laughs> that is essentially how artificial intelligence is being used for marketing. And frankly, it's unnerving. At the same time, what if you know, that same guy locked the doors in your house and you couldn't escape and all you had was him standing right there selling you advertisements every day and night, watching you day and night. It, it, it would be pretty creepy, right? Can we, can we all agree on that? It'd be pretty creepy. I see some head nods. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> frankly, that is essentially what's being done, though. You at home, at YouTube. Yes, we're getting meta with this one. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> You're probably eyeing that video over there in the corner. I see you. Yeah. You're probably going to click that one. And then after that, you're going to find another video. You're going to click that one. You're going to keep going down this rabbit hole, chained to this endless scroll. I like that endless scroll. That sounds dramatic. <laughs> Frankly, when you're chained to that endless scroll, it's hard to think about anything else. And while YouTube continues to feed you advertisement after advertisement, it gets, it's pretty obvious that the reason that you're being shown content that you like to watch, that you'd want to see more of, is so that you can be marketed to, so you can be advertised to. Again, closing the doors in your own house and having a guy watch you all the time. I mean, it's a pretty extreme metaphor, but when you really think about it, it kind of makes sense. All of this, instead of being used to solve problems, Frankly, the way that 
big tech is using artificial intelligence is irresponsible. And this is just a microcosm of the many ethical issues that come with it, artificial intelligence. You have artificial intelligence and race bias, which is something that I never thought I would say in my life. You have artificial intelligence making weapons. Why are we making weapons? <sighs> At the end of the day, we have to understand that there's something wrong with how we are doing artificial intelligence in its most commercial form. And so how are we going to address other ethical issues of artificial intelligence if we don't even address the most basic one? And that's why we need to start teaching kids how to use artificial intelligence in schools. We need, you know, let's, let's face it, big tech is not going to stop, you know? They're, they're making billions of dollars, and frankly, if I was worth $44 billion, this talk would be very different. Hey guys, artificial intelligence is great and used perfectly. Frankly, they're not going to stop. So we need to address the problem at its root, the future. We need to start teaching the future, gen future problem solvers and AIers, if you will, who will be using artificial intelligence to solve problems, how to solve those problems with AI. We need to create an ethical framework for them. Perhaps, you know, let's, let's focus again not on uh, keeping people chained to an endless scroll. Let's focus not on creating political divide within our country through echo chambers. That perhaps we can understand, okay, we need to make AI not like this, how we're doing it right now, so, and make it more productive in the future. It's kind of like how we need to be teaching kids how to use the internet and how to be safe on the internet. Though frankly, we could be doing a better job with that as well. At the end of the day, understanding the power that these tools have, especially when used productively and ethically, for those who are wanting to teach the future generation, the generation that's supposed to save the world, it's a fairly important conversation to have. We need to be creating programs, creating clubs, creating classes, creating educational materials to teach these kids not only about the artificial intelligence systems that will continue to be around in their future, that they will eventually have to create, but also to help them understand why we're, what we're doing wrong right now. Ultimately, if we can do that, if we can do all of that, then maybe I can forgive you for not giving me my iPhone 5S. <laughs> Thank you.